Taji yao zima ya kugoja Dhobe ya mwoyo ni wete reide Yes, a crown of life is awaiting you. A crown of life is awaiting me. A crown of life is awaiting each one of us uh, if we live faithfully to the end. Ah, the title of my message today will be It will never be in vain trusting in God. It will never be in vain trusting in God. And these words are derived, the title is derived from the book of Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, and first Corinthians and first Peter 5, 4. But I'll read previous verses there, and I know God will bless us. So I want to welcome you yet again to this program of Celebrate Your Moment with Joy. I'm your presenter, Pastor Florence Minor, all the way from Minnesota, USA. I love you so much, and that's why every I try every day to bring a word. Monday through Wednesday, I bring you the word of encouragement. And then on Thursday, I bring you the word of encouragement to celebrate in the kitchen. You take care of this body because it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And then on Friday, it is putting on the right gear for the weekend. And then Saturday and Sunday or weekend, Nimchaganyiko Marum. Chochota Chaweza Kutokea, you can always get any message, but for sure, it's a beneficial message. I want to thank God for you. For the time you take to listen, to watch, and even to say a word of encouragement, to think about me. I see, I hear people telling me, oh, how have you been? Some people just calling me. Like now I, I was a little bit uh, somewhere held up and I have so many messages I have not yet responded. Bear with me if I have not responded either to your text or to those inbox or messages. Please bear with me. The work is much, but the rebirths are few. So patience is a virtue. Be patient with me, and I know I'll get back to you. Now, um, we are going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for the privilege of sharing your word. Thank you for my viewers and my listeners, oh God. I pray that each word that I will speak, Jehovah God, you shall, my Father and my God, water it, that it may bear fruit in the hearts of my viewers and my listeners, King of Kings. Oh Lord God, as I share, I pray that I may decrease as you increase. Oh, use me, Jehovah God, as a vessel of honor, oh God, and I pray that I may decrease as you increase. I lift you high up, Jehovah God, for you have said that if you are Lifted up, you shall draw men unto yourself. Do only what you can do. Mana wewe ni mungu na unatupenda. I want to bless you and to glorify you. For that man, for that woman, for that immigrant, for that fire, fatherless person, oh God. May they know that you are with them and not to fear because you are in charge. I pray by my father, for that immigrant who is somewhere and they are not knowing what next, oh my father. They are facing charges, Jehovah God, and they might be deported. Let them know as long as they are in their presence. It will be well with them. And for those international students, they don't even know where the next fees will come for for the next minister, the, for the next semester. The God we trust in, you God, you are the God of the 11th hour. You appear to Abraham. May you appear to each person at the very point of their needs and at the level of their understanding because Jehovah Master, you own the silver and the gold. We bless you, we glorify you. At the end of it, dear Lord, all glory and honor shall be to your name for you have said you'll never share your glory with man in jesus name amen and amen hallelujah well this is what liberation 2 10 says mm. actually the subheading from verse 8 says the persecuted judge and let me start from verse 8 and to the age of the church in same near right these things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are synagogues of Satan. Verse 10 was my main thing. Do not fear any of those things which you are going about to suffer. You are going about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death. I write that in, if you have a hard copy Bible. 
Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Verse 11, he who has a near at him here, what the Spirit says to the churches, he who overcomes shall not hurt, shall not, not be hurt by the second death. Hallelujah. Glory to God. First Peter, first Peter, let me just read it for you here. Oh God, I thank God. Oh God. First Peter, first, first Peter 5, verse 4 says, Glory to God. Glory to God. He lifted up. And when? Oh, it will do well if I also read verse 1. <laughs> the elders who are among you, I exhort. I, whom a Pharaoh elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed, shepherd the flock of God which is among you, Serving as overseers, not by compassion, but willingly. Highlight there, especially the servants of God. Not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being rods over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Verse 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade. Hallelujah. Hmm. It will never be in vain to trust in God. I want to also add here and say, it will never be in vain to serve God. I'll also add and say, it will never be in vain to suffer for the sake of Christ. It will never be in vain when you sing for the Lord. And I'm picked into myself too. My brother and my sister, we may go through situations, we may go through hardships, but I want to tell you it is never, it's not going to be in vain. We may be tested, you may be shifted here and there. Remember, the enemy, the devil had asked permission to shift Peter like wheat, but Jesus said, I have prayed for you, and the gates of hell shall not be able to stand against you. As you are there, know that it is never, it will never be, it has never been, it is never, it is never in vain, and it will never be in vain. It was never in vain in the past, and now, and even for the time to come in the future. What does that tell you? You should not fear. Didn't we read on Revelation 4.10? It says, fear not. Mm, fear not, and here comes. This is not a coincidence. This is a divine plan of God. A book, Fear Not God is in charge, not because I've written it, but because of what the word of God is saying. And for the, the, for, for the shepherds that God has appointed to feed the flock, because it is never going to be in vain, don't put your trust in the flock that you take care of because it is God who has given you the assignment. He who has called you is faithful and he will not let you suffer any rack. He will not let you suffer shame. Yes, People may try to dis, you know, discourage you. People may try to put you down. But he who has called you is faithful. Yeye ni muaminifu. Ni muihoke kukinya mudhia. So we should be faithful even unto death. Let us be faithful unto death. You woman, I'm speaking to you there. When your children are not going in the way you'd want to. When your husband is not acting the way he should do. When your church as a minister of the gospel is not going the way you, you, you as a human being would want it to. Be faithful to the end, to the one who has called you. He called you with a voice and you heard it with your two ears. One of the things I like about God is when he speaks to us, he speaks to, a, to an individual, even when you are in the midst of thousands and thousands. I have attended crusades. I have attended, since I was a young girl, I have attended conferences. I have attended churches where the spirit of God speaks. People speak in tongues and, and there is interpretation. And I want to tell you, God always speaks to an individual, US, to us as individuals. And that's why the Bible tells in the book, tells us in the book of Revelation, let he who has the ear hear what the spirit speaks to the churches. You are the church, my brother and my sister. It will never be in vain trusting in the Lord. That is to give you encouragement. Start firm. Usitigizike mirere. Kwa sababu alie kuita ni muaminifu. Kuwa muaminifu mpaka kifo. The word tells us also, Jesus said, do not be afraid of those who can kill this body, but they have no power over that inner man. Like now in Ukraine, 
There is a lot that is going on. I pray that you may have that moment. That you can remember the brethren. But even as the suffering goes on, their soul will be stabilized by the Lord. Will be established by the Lord. It is my prayer that you, whatever situation you are in, as an international student, your parents maybe sold a piece of rad. Maybe they sold their cows so that you could come to the U.S. to get education and let that be a blessing to them. And you come and the money that you are sent with, it's all gone. And you have not even gone for the third semester, the first year. Don't you worry because the God of Abraham is the same one who provides at the 11th hour. Oh, it will never be in vain for you to trust the Lord because you do not know what your mother or your father prayed when they were selling that piece of bread for you. Usi daganyike, usi jak, si jak, daganyike, duge tu kanie. Stay faithful. Be focused on your books. Even when you don't know where the next penny will come from. Look unto God the author and the finisher of our faith. And you who are at the sound of my voice, should the Lord speak to you, that you be a blessing to that somebody who God would direct to you. Maybe it's just going to a school. I don't know why I'm talking about this anyway. Maybe he's going to a, a college and saying, I'm going to offer, I'm going to partner with this institution and I, I, so that I can be able to sponsor some students, but I don't know them by name and it could be for your sake because somebody is praying for you. Jesus prayed for us. Your parents are praying for you. A new man who is out there, know that your children are praying for you. They are crying for their father. You have gone out like the prodigal son. You have gone out, oh, from the wife of your youth. You know, the, the, the Lord is speaking in the book of Isaiah to that woman and saying, you young woman who have been forsaken in the time of your youth, be encouraged because I'm going to be with you, I'm going to comfort you. And who you who is a widow, who have lost your husband, maybe because of our widow, you could have lost, lost your wife, maybe through sickness and all that, my brother and my sister, may the Lord comfort you because he says in the book of Isaiah 54 that he is the husband to the window. And for those who look people, who have lost their spouses with eyes, thinking, you know, oh, these people, they are walking with our men and they are going to snatch them. Watch out. Because the Bible says that he's the husband to the widow. So when you are mistreating that window, be careful. Mama Mjane, oh yeah, God help us. It will never be in vain to trust God, you who have been forsaken. It will never be in vain, you, that employee. You went to that company, you've been working so hard, and you've been looked down, you try to work hard, you try to talk, they say they don't understand you, or they tell you this is how things go. Yeah, things may go that way in that corporation, but how do things go in the, in the spiritual realm? There's, the way things go in the spiritual realm is when we are, we are faithful to God, he'll be faithful to us, he'll be fighting our battles, and Isaiah 57, 54, verse 17 will be our portion, that no weapon fashion against the righteous will prosper. Hallelujah. You are there. People look at you. You know, and, mm, you know <laughs> some of us, or some, maybe you included, what we are you when you nani? They don't even know who you are. So don't worry. Because they don't know from who you are in the inside. You be faithful even unto death. Your faithfulness, your stability in the Lord is what matters. Not what you tell people who you are. Not what your credential says what they are. The other day I was sharing with somebody and I said, Do you know the best credential is when you have your walk with God and your reign with God is well connected than those other credentials which are written with the pens. Some people even do those exams. You know, they, they pay people to do for them. So don't you be surprised because you hear people they have all these titles and uh, doctors and all that it is good to go to school but don't worship those credentials worship the lord your god and whatever he gives you he blesses you with that take it with a lot of humility and for you like myself who've been being privileged just by the grace of god to come to this land where we have so many opportunities be careful, lest you forget the Lord. Be careful, that you be proud to your brethren who are back home. You've been called at such a time as this. You've been blessed for such a time as this, so that you can be a blessing to them. You are blessed with the Abrahamic blessing to be a blessing. No. You are there with a purpose. Minister to the servants of God. Be a blessing to them. And I'm going to be waiting, but I want to say, it will never be in vain to trust the Lord. Be faithful all oh, to the end because the shepherd of the flock. Now, yeah, 
mchuga mkuu atakaporudi atakupatia taji ya uzima when the great shepherd will come he'll give you the crown of life that is revelation 2:10 may god bless you he who has called us is faithful father in jesus name i thank you may this word be a blessing to each one of us even myself included continue to give me revelation knowledge about it oh my father that we may be stable that we may be patient that we may be pacific we may have pacific in all that is gonna come we bless you we glorify you lord in jesus name amen and amen guess what it all start with a personal stand personal decision personal relationship it is you who hear with your ears it's you the lord speak to where are you at I don't know where you know yourself. I would like to pray. I would like you to pray with me for the Lord to touch you and to transform you. Do you want to say this prayer after me? Lord Jesus, I come before you. I glorify your holy name for your word. And now, dear Father, I release my life to you. I give my heart to thee, dear Father. Forgive me my sins, dear Father. Write my name in the book of life and give me a desire to grow spiritually in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you have been transformed. And maybe you are saved. You are even trust. You even serve God. It doesn't matter. We keep on tapping new from God, you can always pray that prayer and tell God, I'm coming back to the field to the field to serve you. I'm coming back to start being a blessing to your people. Oh, I'm coming back to, to, to be an intercessor for the nations and especially what is going on in Ukraine. I remind you, please remember that country. We are, you are at peace where you are so that you can remember them. We had the pandemic, now is the Ukraine. What is happening? We need to stay on guard in Jesus' name. I love you. God loves you the most. Remember to subscribe to my channel, share with other people if you have not, and if you have, continue praying for this ministry in Jesus' name. I love you. God loves you the most. Celebrate your moment every time because every moment counts. Thank you.